Millions of Americans are dealing with ADHD, but there's still a lot of misinformation and stigma surrounding the condition. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder affects more than 6 million children and a rapidly growing number of adults in the U.S. A new documentary, The Disruptors, aims to educate and reframe how we think about ADHD by sharing the stories of those living with it in their families. It also highlights many high-profile people who have harnessed their ADHD to great success. Here's a clip. I spend uh, my every waking moment trying to get outside of my own head because it's a mess in there. It's very busy. Your brain is always firing. You're firing at 1,000 miles an hour. You're eight cylinders by eight cylinders, 24-7, 365. It is like I'm juggling 20 balls, but I don't remember where they were in the air. I'm just there trying to kind of catch all these balls, and I remember nothing. Imagine somebody sitting on the keys of the computer. That's what your brain is like. That's ADHD. Good. We are joined now by the film's executive producer, Nancy Armstrong, and by Dr. Yamales Diaz, a clinical assistant professor of child and adolescent psychiatry specializing in ADHD. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Nancy, so this topic is personal to your family. Um, how so? Well, this was the film I desperately needed as a mother of three children with mm -hmm. this diagnosis. Parenting a child with ADHD can be incredibly challenging and overwhelming, and particularly because we're still grappling with what is ADHD. Mm -hmm. There's a gross disconnection between what people think ADHD is and what we know from the science and the research. So I wanted to pull together the world's experts on ADHD, look into five families and how they're managing the struggle of ADHD, and then talk to a number of people about that are very famous and successful about their childhood struggle with ADHD, gotcha. and also how they've leveraged their brain mm. uh, to because be very Nancy, successful. some people don't think this is a real thing, you know, and they think maybe you just have a bad child or your child is misbehaving. Number one, it's so powerful, so well done. The storytelling is fantastic that I called a couple of people that I know and said, have you ever thought about ADHD? Because their child has been told that they have behavioral problems. Mm. And so what do you say to, what do we need to do to take the stigma out of it? You know, you told the five families, but you didn't include your own family. Well, my kids are older now. They're uh, 20, 18, and 16. And so I really wanted to show what we went through. What you through. went through. Okay, right. got it. And I, and I think, you know, there shouldn't be a stigma around neurodiversity. I think yeah. maybe we're at an inflection point uh, now. You guys have done a great job this month really highlighting that. And I think having well-known people finally come out and yes. talk about their ADHD, they also talk about the childhood struggle, but they do talk about how they leverage the strength because this diagnosis does come with some challenges that do yeah. need to be yes. managed, yes. but it also comes with some pretty impressive Mr. strengths. Things, yes. yeah. well, Dr. Diaz, I think it's, it's an interesting diagnosis because I think a lot of people want to deny it. They want to say that it doesn't exist. Uh, and other people are reaching for it, looking for it as an answer. So what is the state of the science in terms of diagnosing kids? The state of science is very clear. ADHD is very real. It is a neurological condition that is related to very specific uh, differences in the brain. We have seen for years um, low dopamine and certain parts of the brain that are either overactive or underactive. It's, it's just as real as any other medical diagnosis. But I understand why people question it because the manifestation of the disorder mm -hmm. is behavior. And so it's easy to call it bad behavior. So yeah. you want to parent That's bad so behavior. True. So I, I understand when parents come to me, you know, they're like, I've been shouting and yelling and doing all of these things. I feel terribly about they that. Feel guilty. that they, yeah, they, they feel guilty. They feel so guilty. They lost it with their child. Absolutely. I mean, and they don't realize that it's there was some reason for the child's behavior that they could have parented a little differently. I like the framing in the documentary, too, because you were talking about you can use it as your superpower, but you have to be careful with that, too. But there's a positive and a ne negative. Hyperactivity really means energy. Distractibility, curiosity. Impulsivity, creativity. It's a matter of framing it, but yeah. be careful about just saying it's just a superpower because there are still some challenges here. Yeah, there are challenges. And I mean, my experience with my son, I mean, I should have known when we got kicked out of mommy and me class when he was a toddler, <laughs> uh, but it took years to get that diagnosis. And then with my girls, we totally missed the diagnosis because yeah. girls present so differently than boys um. do. They're not as disruptive and hyperactive in, say, a school setting. They, they're daydreamers. They fidget. They are emotional. A lot they of us do that, with, though. With friends. But they can get through. They're very smart, so they get through elementary school intact, and then things can fall apart in middle school. Now, for kids, that might be at home watching this, um, adults and that are at home saying, yeah. you know what, that's me. Um, what are some of the good things that we can attach to ADHD? Because we hear ADHD and then behavioral problems, what are some of the positive so aspects? So the strengths are 
they're very creative. They have mm. a ton of ideas. They're very curious. They have they have tons of energy. They can connect dots. Whereas like a neuro neurotypical person sees this, a person with ADHD sees this. Wow. So they can connect dots that you wouldn't even think to connect. They're just they're and they're they're very risk averse. So they're they're not risk averse. So they take lots of risks. They'll take big swings at things. They can see yeah. opportunities and then act on them. Dr. Davis, are we just diagnosing this more, or is it happening more because of something in the environment? Oh, that's a good well, question. Well, let's just say one important thing, which is pre-COVID, we the state of the science was very clear that the reason we are recognizing it more and diagnosing it more is because we have better tools, we have better, um, you know, approach to assessment, and we have reduced stigma. So people know what it's called, and they're coming yeah. in to see us. So that's a good thing. Post-COVID, we still have to see whether or not we're seeing increases because kids were home, because yeah. behavior problems started to go up, because learning problems yeah. started to go up. So we're not sure yet. Obviously, we're still in the midst of this. But um, pre-COVID, right. we know we appreciate it you. was pretty clear. Thank you so much, Nancy Armstrong, Yamala Diaz. Thank you for joining us. Valuable information. The Disruptors, available now on Apple TV+, Vudu, and Google Play.